This is Official Nerd Business. Hello nerd boys and girls and welcome to Prime Mover. We are currently looking at the puzzle Clamp. Clamp says if A is greater than C send C to D, if A is lower than B send B to D, if A is neither greater than C nor lower than B send A to D. So reworking the wording on that puzzle, um, if A is between the bounds of C and D, uh, or of C and B, then we want A to B send to D, otherwise replace it with one of our boundary values. Um, so we've got a, quite a complex machine here uh, that uh, does exactly that. Uh, the upper bound C is let into the machine the first time then it locks up until we have worked out what number to send to D. Um, and when it is passed through then it also takes in a value from A into this machine. This calculates whether uh, we want the um, value A in the first case we want value A uh, to pass through because it is smaller than the upper bound 66 and it is bigger than the lower bound 42. Um, but we, this machine could also decide to send out uh, number C. When it does send out a number um, in the next machine, which is basically the same machine, uh, number B is allowed in and whatever A or C number we uh, get out of this is let in, then the same comparison is made here, in reverse obviously, but it's basically the same. And whatever we get out of that is sent to the output and releases the next cycle. So how does this machine look internally? Uh, quite complex, quite complex. Um, whatever number we get in on the uh, boundary input is stored here and whatever number uh, we want to test itself is stored here and both are duplicated into this machine. How the releasing works, uh, what these two streams do I'll show in a second. Um, for now number is stored here, number is stored here and um, they are both sent into this machine which contains two clocks. This number, number A in this case, so the, the 55 sent in and is constantly subtracted from until it hits zero and then is released. At the same time uh, when this is zero and this track always contains a zero at that point it also releases whatever is in this clock, which now might be positive or negative. If the number uh, released was negative, then the A value is greater than uh, the boundary value and that's not what we want sent to D. Um, so then the short path is taken and if it is positive, uh, then the boundary value is larger than the A value and uh, that's alright, so the long path is taken. Um, and we get back to this machine with the, the storages. Um, this machine is wired up in such a way that on, uh, the zeros leave the machine here and either a positive or a negative value is sent out to here. Either a fast output or a slow output is sent out to here. Um, so let's assume that A is within bounds. Then the default wiring of this machine uh, applies. A is sent out, the boundary value is set to destroy itself, but now the switches are toggled, so a little bit after the release signal, the zero is uh, sent out of this line and hits these buttons, then you will see the um, this control value which you will send out, and this toggles the switches back to their starting positions. If we do exceed the boundary value, then this is on the quicker path, and it first switches the um, machines into the alternate state, and then the release signal hits them, and they get sent out. Then these values pass through the switches, resetting the machine back to their default setting. So either uh, A or C leaves the machine here, is sent on to uh, the second test, which is in fact just the same machine with the same logic. Um, Plus and minus are switched, but for all the rest this is exactly the same machine. Um, this time the uh, boundary value is stored up here and whatever value we got from uh, the A or C machine is stored down here. Um, but the rest is exactly the same. 
So again, we check if uh, the bounds are exceeded here, and uh, either the AC value or the B value is sent on to D, and it releases the next cycle. So let's have a look at how this works. We can see now that our boundary value is stored here and set to destroy itself, and the uh, A value is stored here. Both are fed into this machine where they are now running in loops to, uh, in, in our subtraction clocks. And we will need to look at what happens when this hits zero. Fourteen, we are not there yet. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zip. Alright. So right now our release signal is going out and this is a positive, so that's that's our good value, we want to keep whatever is in A at the moment, so this takes the slow track. If we see how that plays out, the zero comes out here. Releases the 55 to uh, enter the next phase in the machine and the 66 is destroyed. And whatever control value we had, the 11 you just saw popping out of here, switch the machine back to its default state. So uh, when we start testing the next number, uh, we will see a... Um, boundary value stored here which will probably destroy itself and an A value stored here which will probably pass on unless this machine sends the control signal on the short track when it changes state. So here we have exactly the same thing, boundary stored up here, A is stored up here and um, because whether or not this is greater or lower is switch between uh, testing for upper bound and testing for lower bound but we've also switched where the inputs go and whatever higher value comes in from the top or whatever load now it, it works out so here we have exactly the same thing with exactly the same result and in fact Oh, this is a nice uh, example. This will be on the short track, so it will toggle the machine state before the release signal is sent. Just in time. In what we programmers like to call a race condition. Um, and now we start testing for the next number. So this is clamp, and it works, but it takes a lot of cycles. And while running this you can see that one part of the machine is now currently testing big numbers, so that takes a lot of subtracting. And again. And you might start to notice that one part of the machine is currently working and the other part of the machine is not active. And when you think about it, that's not strictly necessary. So as you can see in a second, this gives us the correct output, but we can do a lot faster. So let's have a look at how we might improve things. Here is basically the same machine, the, the, the logic parts are exactly the same as what we just saw, but the uh, general logistics on, on the main board is slightly different. And that it now, um, when A and C are tested, that number is released, and it also releases the the, the B test. But it also uh, slips a new number into the AC test. And when the B test is done, it will allow these inputs to uh, let the new number through. Um, so we now can run two tests at the same time. We have an AC test and we have whatever comes out of that and the B test. Um, to show, same numbers go into here. Takes a while. Uh, 
And now we see that the B test is started, but we also start up a new AC test. And if this test uh, runs shorter, it runs in a shorter amount of time than this test, then the numbers simply are stored up here until this releases itself, and then it allows new number in while all the while a new number is running through here. So that um, doubles the, the speed at which we can test things. It doesn't ex actually result in half the, the cycles, but it goes a lot faster than the solution that we just saw. So there's a bit of an optimized version of Clamp. And that's all we've got for this week. I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching the solution. I uh, certainly hope you've enjoyed seeing the, uh, the improvements that we could do upon the basic design. Um, and I will see you next week. Thanks for watching this video on official nerd business. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon. Did we discuss everything you wanted to hear or did we miss anything? Any topics you want to hear in O&B? Leave your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.